Hello and welcome to another JavaScript tutorial. In this tutorial we will going to learn about nested loops. A nested loop basically is a loop inside a loop. And the inner loop is dependent on the outer loop. If the outer loop does not execute, the inner loop does not execute either. In this example, we would like to first of all work with an if condition that is a nested if condition so that you can see the nesting. And then we're going to talk about the nested loops because we didn't talk about the nested if condition earlier on when we completed the if condition topic. So let's say if you had to check on two conditions. First of all, a person has to fall in XYZ department and then has to fall in certain salary range. Then you would like to apply the following bonus. If you had to work on these parameters, let's set up some variables that as long as the department code is given, let's set it to 20. As long as the employee's salary is given, we will be able to determine the bonus. Now, we would like to write our first if condition. If department code is equal equals to 20 or department code is equal equals to 30. That means if a person is working for either department 20 or department 30, then this will be the condition to evaluate. Otherwise, if that isn't the case, if the person is not working for the department 20 or 30, rather is either working for 10 or 40, then this is what will going to be applied. Otherwise, you will going to simply tell this user bonus is zero dollars. Now the next condition that we would like to check for department number 20 or 30 is that if salary is greater than equals to 35,000 and salary is less than equals to 79,000 then bonus is equals to 200. Otherwise, bonus is equals to 250. Similarly, we would like to have a salary range for the other department, 10, 40. That if salary is between 45,000 and 109,000, then the bonus is 350 or otherwise it is $400. So this is an example of a nested if condition. The inner conditions are salary based, the outer conditions are department based. So if the person is not working for department 20 or 30, right away line number 10 will shift the direction to line 17. If line number 17 is 10 or 40, if that isn't the case, then automatically to line 24. So right away the code logic will going to move around on lines 10, 17, or 24. If you make it through line 11, then either line 13 will execute in case 11 and 12 is true, or line 15 will execute if 14 is true. Similarly, if you are in line number 17 code, then line 20 will execute if 19 is true, and 22 will execute if 21 is true, and coming down to the else, if else is true, then 25 will going to execute. Let's test this based on our current values. Our current values are 20 and 45. So we're going to just come down here and we're going to display the bonus. Document.write bonus is bonus. And document.write bonus is bonus. So I expect to get a bonus of $200 because the salary I have given is within the range of thirty-five dollars to 79000 for department number 20. And here we go. Bonus is $200. Now there is a lot of repetition in the code. I have 
this line repeating this line, the same line, and else is also the same line repeating. Else pretty much means that display a bonus of zero. And since I've set the default to zero, if I drop this else and make one bonus output outside, the bonus will automatically turn out to be zero dollars if lines 10 and lines 17 do not execute. If lines 10 or 17 do execute, then by no means bonus can be equals to zero. So I have brought down my code by four lines. And if I execute it now, you will going to get to see the same output of $200. I've just reduced the number of lines and I have brought the repeatability of the code down to one line from three lines. Now if I change these parameters to let's say 25,000 and if I execute the same code again, now it automatically jumps to 25 because uh, $250 because the department code is still 20 but now the salary falls in the range of else. Similarly, if I change it to let's say 40 and change the salary to 120,000, now the salary will going to be for department number 40 in the else portion so I must get the bonus of $400. If I bring this down to 90,000 and as I execute this code I'm going to get 350. If I take the department code to be 50 which is none of the two conditions of line 10 and 17 it says the bonus is zero dollars. So that's how the nested if conditions work. So now we will going to see how the nested loops work once you have understood the nested if conditions. The nested loops also work in a similar fashion that you have a loop inside a loop. So we have an outer loop and we have an inner loop. Now think of it like this as if you are looking at an analog clock. The second completes 60 cycles for a minute to move up by one. Then minute will going to remain one until second complete 60 cycles and then minute moves up to two. And at the same time, the hour will going to keep it count at the same number until the minute completes all 60 cycles. So in 3600 cycles of seconds, an hour will be displaced by one. That's how nested loops also work. The inner loop completes X number of cycles for an outer loop to move by one place. So if I had to display the time kind of a look and feel, then I can control my outer loop and my inner loop in the same fashion. So if I say my outer loop is controlling the minutes, so I can say variable minutes equals to one, minutes should be less than equals to 60 minutes plus plus and then I will going to use my outer loop inner loop for seconds second equals one second less than 60 why because when the second becomes equals to 60 then we should move to the next minute so we're going to go as far as 59 and then second plus plus so what I would like to do is, in the, ins in the innermost loop, I would like to display the current value of minute and the current value of second. However, after displaying each minute and second combination, I would like to break the row and then after displaying information about one particular minute, all 60 outputs, when it goes to the next minute, I would like to display a horizontal row. Now when I will going to execute this code, it will going to produce 3600 lines of output or more in fact, because I have 60 HRs. So uh, for each minute, so we have 420 outputs that will be generated. Let's try to see if the computer can handle 
discount. And you can see very easily here, okay, as I scroll down, and between each minute, there's a horizontal row. And as you can see, the minute and the seconds. So the second reaches 59. We go to the next minute, next minute, next minute. Goes all the way down to... So this code basically runs through that process. If I reduce this to six less than 60, because as it completes the 60 minutes, I should have an hour. So after I make this brief change, if I execute my code again, here I go. The last minute that runs now is 59. So that's how you can be using the nested loops. And nested loops don't exactly have to be of the same type. You could use a while for combination, a do while while combination, a while while combination, a do while do while combination, or a for for combination. And there's no limit to how many levels you could nest. Well, that's all for now. We're going to explore for loops in the future again, especially in the nested and non-nested fashion, especially under the topic of array. Take care of yourself. See you in the next tutorial.